Welcome back everyone. So we're going to implement a linear queue using an array. So let's get started. Now before I move on to what is a queue, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and most importantly click that notification bell if you enjoyed this video. So what is a queue? So a queue is simply a linear data structure that supports FIFO operations. And linear means that items can be added sequentially to the queue and removed sequentially from the queue. And FIFO stands for first in, first out. And all that says is that the first element we add to our queue is the first element we remove from our queue. And I like to think of a queue as a line in your favorite fast food restaurant. So picture you're in line, and you're the first person in line. If you're the first person in line, you're the first person who's going to be served and the first person to leave. So that's basically the same thing here. The first element in line is going to be the first element to leave that line, and that's how a queue works. The last element in line is also going to be the last element that leaves that line or that queue. So let's move on to the end queue operation. Now, to enqueue an element is the same thing as add an element to the rear of my queue. Now, unlike a stack where I add to the top and remove from the top, so I only need to keep track of one variable, in a queue, because I add to the rear and remove from the front, I need to keep track of those two things. Initially, I'm going to set my front and rear to negative 1 to represent that I have no elements currently in my queue. At the point where I add my very first element to my queue, I'm going to set my front and rear both to index 0 since the front element is going to be at index 0 and also my rear element is going to be at index 0 since we only have one element in our queue. At the point where I add another element to my queue, I only increment my rear by a single index. And I keep doing so until I've added all the elements I need to add to my queue. Now let's look at the dequeue operation. So there are two ways we can think about this. We can be more time efficient and less space efficient or more space efficient and less time efficient. If we were to go with the more space efficient route, what we can do is every time we remove an element from the front of our queue, we can shift the remaining elements to the left. So every time we remove a single element, it will be O of n time complexity. Now, if we were to dequeue all the elements in the queue, that would be very, very time costly, resulting in a big O of n squared time complexity. Now, the way I'm going to do this is to be more time efficient, but less space efficient. So every time I move an element from my queue, I'm just going to increment my front by one index. So it'll simply hold the next element in line. And we can keep performing this action. Now, we can see how much space is being wasted. If I wanted to add an element to my queue, my rear will go up by one index. So my rear will be set to index 5, and my front remains at index 4. So we've essentially wasted spaces 0, 1, 2, and 3. So we can see how this becomes very, very space inefficient. Now there's a better approach known as a circular queue, which we'll learn about later on. As for now, if you wanted to dequeue the last element in this queue, all we do is set our front and rear back to negative 1, since we have no elements currently in our queue. Now let's look at the common operations associated with the queue. I'm going to cover five common operations, nq, dq, peak, is empty, and is full. Now, before we get to those methods, let's see what the actual class structure of a linear queue looks like. So here I have three instance variables, front, rear, and a nums reference variable. The front is going to keep track of the front of my queue, the rear is going to keep track of the rear of my queue, I'm going to use an int array to represent my queue. Now, in my constructor, I'm going to take any size, which is going to be used to represent the maximum size of my queue. I initialize my front and rear instance variables to negative 1, and I also initialize my nums reference variable with a new array object of that size. Now, let's look at the nq method. So, I'm going to take in some arguments data, which will be used to add to my queue. The first thing I want to do is check if my queue is full. If my queue is full, which means there's no more space for me to add anything to my queue, I'm simply going to throw a new illegal state exception to indicate just that. However, in this case, my queue is not full. So, I'll simply move on to my next if block. So in here, I check if my queue is empty. Now, the reason I want to do that is because as we remember, our empty queue, our front and rear will both be set to negative one. So I'd want to increment my front to index zero to represent my first element in my queue. However, in this case, because it's not empty, I simply just have to increment my rear by one index and insert my data at that position. Now, let's look at the DQ method. So the first thing I want to do in this method is check if my queue is empty, because if my queue is empty, then that means there are no elements for me to remove. 
So I'll simply throw a new no such element exception to indicate that I have no elements to remove in my queue. However, in this case, my queue is not empty. So the next thing I want to do is to be able to store that data associated at the front index in my queue, since I want to be able to return that data. So I'll simply store that data in a variable called temp. Now the next thing I want to do is check if my front is equal to my rear. Now if my front is equal to my rear, that would mean I have exactly one element in my queue. And for me to remove that element, all I can do is set my front and rear both back to negative 1. However, in this case, my front is not equal to my rear, so I'll simply move on to my else. So like we've seen before with the animation, my front will increment by one index. And then all I have to do at this point is return that temp data that I stored. Now, let's look at the peak method. So this method is pretty straightforward. If my queue is empty, I'll simply throw a new no such element exception to indicate that I have no elements currently in my queue. However, in this case, my queue is not empty. So I'll simply return the data associated with the front index in my queue. Now, let's move on to the empty method. So my empty method is also very simple. All I want to do is return whether or not my front is equal to negative 1. Now we can also do a check if our rear is equal to negative 1, because as we know, both our front and rear will be set to negative 1 if we have an empty queue. So here I just did a check to check if my front is equal to negative 1. If my front is equal to negative 1, I'll return true. If my front is not equal to negative 1, I'll return false. In this case, I'll simply return false. Now, let's look at the full method. So in our full method, it's also very simple. Because our rear variable holds the index of the last element we add to our queue, if our rear is equal to nums.length minus 1, then it would mean that our queue is full. So we'll simply return true if that's the case. However, in this case, our rear is not equal to nums.length minus 1, or in this case 5. So we'll simply return false. Now, let's look at the complexity analysis. So for time complexity, since our nq and dq methods add an element to the rear of our queue and remove an element from the front of our queue respectively, we're going to use a constant number of operations. Now the number of operations we're using is also independent of the size of the array. So it remains the same regardless of the size of our array, that's why it's constant time. For our peak is empty and is full methods, they're all going to use a constant number of operations, since the number of operations they use are going to be independent of the size of our array. Moving on to the space complexity, for nq, dq, peak, is empty, and is full, we're all using a constant amount of space independent of the size of the array. And we're not resizing this queue, so that's going to mean that we're not going to use any extra space if we have to transfer those elements over. Now, keep in mind how much space we're actually wasting by implementing a linear queue using an array. And we'll see a much better implementation of that known as a circular queue later on, so definitely stay tuned for that. If you enjoyed this content, please hit that like and subscribe button. See you in the next video.